Sometimes you get one that just has you scratching your head, but there's always a reason. We use a prime example in our presentation where there's two identical hay carters, one behind the other, and one of them rolls on a dead straight piece of road. This one was unique. Back here is a railway crossing. The first truck went over the railway crossing and started a bit of a bump. Three sways, two and then over. That's all it took. The second truck didn't. It could be as simple as the weight of the hay on one side is heavier and caused it to do the swaying. There was no wind, there's nothing else. But it only took one, two, plop to go over. They weren't speeding, I think it was 70 something k's when they went over. You can do everything right and something else in the environment can cause you to tip over. So maybe if you went over the railway crossing at 65 k's an hour instead, or maybe if you had rollover protection system or electronic braking system, something like that would have solved that problem. We're really happy with the decision to go to roll stability because if the guy gets it wrong, um, enters that bend too fast, he has something that's actually assisting him to slow down. We're finding there's a lot more stories from guys uh, where they do believe it's definitely had a, um, a trigger that has saved them in some sort of a bad situation, whether it's a rollover, whether it's a, a trailer sway or a jackknife type event. I've been in a rollover and I'm assured that we did nothing wrong on the day. The road, it was an accident, the road gave way and suddenly you're on your side and there's nothing you can do about it. And as I said, the trailer goes pretty slowly it seems, but the prime mover goes incredibly fast. If you've spent plenty of time on the road, you've probably seen the rear bogey of a trailer in front of you lift its inside wheels around a curve. It's a perfect example of the amazing level of control truckies have. Control that lets them drive their rigs right up to the rollover limit with a really fine margin for error without actually knowing for certain whether it's going to roll or not. I've had people say to me that some of my wheels have lifted off the ground and I haven't seen it at the time, even though I've been looking. So you know, it is certainly interesting to you know, find out exactly how easy it can be occurring and you know, you're not always aware of it. The simple fact is, if you're driving at the limit, all it takes is a brick on the road, perhaps some loose gravel, crosswind, anything unexpected and your truck will roll. That's where an extra one kilometre an hour or an extra one degree of lean can come into play. The thing to remember is that you only need some other factor to have an influence. And it might be something completely out of the driver's control and you will have a rollover. Probably the key thing is if the, the trucks in a lot of instances only have to have a little bit of less pressure on them, the truck drivers, so that they weren't right up against it all the time and didn't feel compelled to take every corner on the limit of, of the ability of the truck and themselves, then that would have to be a help. I drove for many, many years and uh, learnt by close calls. Okay, I was lucky. But one of these days, or well, I quote now, but one of those days it could have been the opportunity where I just pushed that envelope just that fraction too far through lack of, con uh, lack of concentration or something like that, and all of a sudden it's gone. A lot of rollovers happen at speeds lower than the advisory limit. They happen because the centre of gravity and centrifugal force combine, and sometimes with other elements like road camber, load shifts, even sudden gusts of winds. They upset the balance of the trailer, especially if it's already been driven close to the limits. You could be sitting in the office and get a typo on your computer, and uh, a minor distraction means you've, you've got a spelling mistake on an email, but for a tanker driver, uh, or for a heavy vehicle driver, um, that minor distraction um, can, you know, when you're only dealing with a foot of road um, tolerance on either side of your wheels, minor distraction can be the thing that takes you over the edge. We know that it takes more than one thing to get to an accident. It usually takes two, three or four. And you start to put one or two things together and you'll get a result.